Today, we're going to be continuing our journey through Ephesians, and we're going to talk about Paul's prayer for the Ephesian church. Now, the church is probably six to eight years old, maybe even 10 on the uh, long side, but they've been believers. They've been a church for a while, and prayer is an important part of Paul's ministry. And we're going to get to see how Paul prays for the churches. So, Bob, if you would, I'm going to bring up the slide and if you read the passage for us. For this reason, I too, having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, which exists among you and your love for all the saints, do not cease giving thanks for you while making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his glory, excuse me, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power towards us who believe. All right. So next time we're going to talk more about that power that uh, Paul is going to get into, into. But here we have Paul praying for the church. What, what are your observations about this prayer, Bob? Well, part of it just struck me this morning is that you know, we live in this age of instant communication and Zoom and Facebook and all of this stuff. Paul didn't. He was quite a ways away at the point of which this is happening. And yet he's hearing of the faith that these guys have. Somebody's mm -hmm. been there. Somebody's passed the message. Somebody's written him. And there's something about what's happening in their lives, what they're doing, that is an evidence of the faith that they have in God and faith through Jesus. And it, in the midst of persecution, in the midst of daily trials and tribulation, their faith is standing out. And then the other thing that stands out is that they have love one for another. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that Jesus said would show who his disciples were by the love they had one for another. And I think that just speaks of so much health in that church. They've got a faith that's evident, but also the love of Jesus is evident in their lives. And I think that's why Paul in his prayers is always giving thanks for him while he's, I'm sure, praying petitions and good things for them. He's giving thanks for what God is doing among them. Yeah, this is, this is really good observations for anybody that's making disciples you mentioned that they had heard or paul had heard and that really underscores the need for the disciple maker to stay in <coughs> touch and know how the flock is doing so i really like that and like you said faith and love stand out they're kind of this shiny example. Uh, it, it's interesting that the, the believers in the church have been walking with Jesus for a while, and yet Paul prays specifically that they might know him, and they, that they might know him in a certain way. Talk about that in disciple making. Do we ever outgrow getting to know Jesus? You know, do we ever stop helping people get to know God? I, I think if we ever stop ourselves or stop helping our disciples to know God, we we are failing in a big way because it's such a progressive knowing. It's not just knowing about God. Mm. So it speaks a lot to motive. What's the motive of why we do what we do? What's the motive of why we want our disciples to do what they do? It comes out of the knowing of the incredibleness of God, the love, the mercy, the grace, who he is, that this 
this God who we call Father is also this God of glory who lives in this something we can't imagine because our little finite minds, sometimes we try to put God in a box, but it takes a progressive knowing. Yeah. And out of that knowing comes more love, and out of that love comes a desire to do what God wants, which is that nobody perishes and everyone would come to the saving knowledge of him through Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we're none of us are know-it-alls, right? And, and I, I see three uh, kinds of ways to get knowledge here. Uh, one is they were told about God, about Jesus. Uh, two, uh, Paul's praying for them, so they're getting revelation. It's a, it's a gift from God. God is informing the Ephesian church about himself. But the third, Jesus talks about in John 7, 17, he says, if you do what I say, then you will know what I say is true. And so it's, if you apply this, then you get more knowledge. And Paul says, hey, you guys are doing great at loving one another. So they're applying what they know and they get more knowledge about God from doing that. So uh, Bob, can you think of a, an, an instance where you felt like you were really struggling to know God. And then uh, through prayer and circumstances, you just kind of had this light. You had a uh, revelation where God made himself more known to you. I'm trying to think of a quick way to capsulate this but uh i had a father who was absent much of my life due to due to uh an alcohol issue and so i struggled in the father image of god and uh through a process of some tough times i just became aware god made me aware by kind of putting some questions on my heart of the incredible love that he has the incredible kind of father heart that God has, which is so different from what most people have experienced. And it's beyond the ideal of the ideal human father. It's so much more than that because it's, it's so all encompassing the ability that he has to give us peace and to restore broken areas. Yeah, I have a similar kind of uh, experience where uh, when I was diagnosed with my illness, I, in order to pull myself up by my bootstraps, I would say, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And one day when I was praying, I felt like God was tapping me on the shoulder and saying, it matters to me. Uh, I was just overwhelmed with the love of wow. God. And so I quit saying that, you know, it does matter. And so now I say, it's okay. It's okay. But we have these supernatural moments where God speaks to us and reveals himself to us. But, uh, you know, a person could... Uh, completely depend on the miraculous, but God's given us his word. Say a little bit about how the disciple should pursue knowing God through the word of God. I think one of the things that happens is it's really clear that when we choose to uh, confess our sins, choose to believe in what Jesus did for us on the cross, that we receive the Holy Spirit. Mm. It's, it's Holy Spirit comes within us as a seal or a guarantee of what's to come. And as we read the word, asking the Holy Spirit to help us get a greater revelation of God, we learn more about how God is, who God is in the stories, especially I love the stories in the New Testament of 
of how the religious people were rejecting this person or rejecting this person or judging this person. And Jesus never did that. He just invited them in, gave them life and light and, and um, encouraged them in a different way. And you get such a different understanding of, of God and Jesus versus what we see so much in religion. Yeah. And, and if you're a young disciple, or you're a disciple maker, the word is so foundational. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I do, if I have a brand new baby believer, well, they need milk. So I start them reading about Jesus in the gospels and just get to know this wonderful savior that's saved you and uh, get to know them. And maybe you're starting off with one chapter a day. And then when you get nice and strong, I move them to two chapters a day, you know, one in the Gospels, one in Acts or the New Testament. And then we get up to three and eventually four. And when you're getting at least four chapters of the Word of God in your life, you're starting to get saturated and you're really connecting dots and getting to know God. So any last words, Bob? I was just thinking of what you're saying. It's so important to see the word in context mm. because sometimes you'll hit a scripture and you have to think, okay, where is this? What's the context that this is always coming in? And I think that God can reveal himself by putting those pieces together uh, to understand what he's saying in a certain circumstance or situation. The other thing is he uses that in a tough time. He'll bring something you read to your mind to comfort you in the midst of that moment. And that's when this, that piece of scripture comes alive. It's not just on the page. It just came into your life and it made a difference that day. Good, good. So let's pray for one another. Let's pray that we get to know God and get to know this wonderful gift of salvation that we have and read the scriptures, be open to the Holy Spirit, revealing to us what God has to say. And uh, trust me, it'll blow you away. <laughs> All right. We love you. God bless you. And until next time, keep following Jesus.